Hi, my name is Victoria Finley Wolf, and I'm a designer for Sizzix. Today I'm going to be showing you how to put together the bow tie block. One of my current designs of the dies that I've been using is a traditional block, it's been around for a very long time, but the modern possibilities to this design are endless. So today we're going to be looking at how we put those pieces together in curved piecing and also um, a little addition that I added to the die is to be able to put in this little star point, an easy adaptation of the bow tie block, but ultimately goes together fast, easy, and quick. Okay, so we're going to start in, I have my pieces laid out. We're going to use the Big Shot Pro. This die only works on the Big Shot Pro. I got my pieces ready to go. So the Big Shot Pro will cut eight layers at a time, which is really nice for these because I don't really want to be cutting all of my curves with the rotary cutter. So this, I can cut eight layers. I have lots of options that I can play these out. Uh, one, or two, three, many different designs, right? So I have my pink there. This is the bow tie shape, which I actually designed it so that you could put the two pieces possibly in two different colorways. Oftentimes you'll find this all as one shape but this time we have more options to play with the color and the placement. So for today, we're gonna to do all of those in the same color layout. And then I also cut out my quarter square circle pieces, which are gonna to go together for this block. Um, and we're gonna jump in and show you how to put those together. Now you should not be afraid of piecing these curves. It's very gentle. Uh, you're working with a little bit of bias on the bow tie shape. Um, and I'm gonna show you how you need to work with that. The very first thing you do, anytime that you're working with curves, you wanna find the center of your shape, okay? Cutting curves and working with curves as I'm working with a mirror image and you don't wanna distort uh, by pinning that in the wrong place. So by knowing where your centers are, your pieces will line up perfectly. Okay, so I've finger pressed my centers. I'm gonna nestle those two little creases together. I'm gonna to pin that together. Okay, now I need to pin the ends. I do all of this with just three pins. We don't need to over pin. Uh, once you line up your raw edges, I'm gonna put these two raw edges together. That's exactly where they line up. Once you have those sections pinned, you'll see that there's not really any extra fabric, that the fabric is going to lay perfectly flat when you start sewing it underneath the needle. Okay, so I have my three pins in place. We can see now that those raw edges from pin to pin line up perfectly, that I'm able to sew from my first pin to my second pin without having any problem about where the extra fabric is lying. Now this is good to know. Do I want to sew it this way or do I want to sew it this way under the needle? This is the way I want it to go. The floppy toppy, the extra fabric always goes to the top. If I tried sewing it the other way, after I finished it and flip it over, I would have all of this pleated across the top and we don't want that to happen. So keeping the floppy part on top means I can control that I'm going to keep all that fabric out of the way when I'm sewing it. Okay, so let's get this guy together. My raw edges are together. I'm going to be sewing a quarter inch seam. And I'm just going to focus from my first pin to my second pin. One hand is keeping my raw edges together. My other hand is at my middle pin. I'm going to do a little back stitch. Now I've gotten to my middle pin. I'm going to finish sewing to the outside. I'm always still sewing my quarter inch seam. I'm able to use my left hand to keep that extra fabric out of the way. Take my final pin out, back stitch, and there you've sewn your first curve. Okay, and then I give that a press. Um, depending on the kinds of fabrics that you're using, if you have a light fabric with a dark fabric, you're going to want to press this curve to the dark fabric. Um, on this one, it doesn't really matter. I don't need to open up that seam. I can just look at the way the fabric is pressing. If it wants to go that way, I'm going to press it that way. Okay, so now I have four sections uh, of the bow tie. And in this instance, if we sew these all together, we can make that perfect round section come together, um, which is what I've done on the quilt behind me here. 
Um, but you also have the option to really play with how you're putting these pieces together. You could also start playing and changing the layout. I'm going to move this guy out of the way. Right? What if you start changing it a little bit? You can start to see that if you start filling it in, you can get a nice zigzag pattern going on in the inside. Um, you can make stripes that happen towards the inside of this block. If I want to continue to put and flip-flop the shapes of these, I can sew these together and do rows that fill in all the way across. Um, there's so many different options that we have to be, to be able to play with and put these pieces together. I also want to show you how you sew the little star point together in the middle of the block. When you have these three pieces all sewn together, you're going to have this same quarter circle shape. So it's going to sew together the exact same way. You'll notice on these pieces that I have the little uh, dog ears that stick out on the end are already cut off from the die, which helps for easy piecing. Because those edges are cut straight already, that shows me exactly where these pieces need to line up. So keeping my raw edges together, you can see that those are going to be just lying perfectly together. I'm going to just put one little pin in place to hold that, and I'm going to sew my quarter inch seam down this side, and then I'm going to sew on the final piece. Do my little back stitch so my seams stay put. Sew my quarter inch seam. Pull out my pins. Okay, now when I flip that open, my seam's going to go to the fuller side of the shape and give that a little press. Okay, so you can see that nicely. Now this little guy is going to go on there. And it's again, it's the same thing. You have those little dog-eared shapes so that you know exactly where these pieces are going to line up. Put a little pin in. And after I finish this seam, I now have a quarter circle again. So they go together very easy and quickly. If you have all your pieces cut out, you could be chain piecing right now and just zip all of these through the machine and put them together in one swift move. Okay, so I've sewn the final piece on. I'm flipping it over. I'm going to press my seams all to the outside of that quarter circle shape. And you'll see that because of those little dog ears where you lined up your fabric, you're left with a very nice quarter inch seam at the top so that when you sew that into your bow tie, you're not going to lose your point. My other little shape out here. And now that piece is going to sew in just as we just did on sewing together the quarter circle in general. Okay. So again, you can put this together to make the one block, or you could be playing with them and turning them and making different sort of effects happen. Now I have a really nice example I want to show you of what I was just explaining to you about the star points and looking at how you can change the background of the block. So here I've used two different fabrics. I've set my little quarter circle with the star point to the inside of the shape, and then I'm flip-flopping it. So I'm able to control putting a light blue in the background on some and doing the darker blue on the other so that when I sew the whole thing together, I now have a modern version uh, of a bow tie block. So let me show you how to put these guys together. So now we're just working with the four uh, quarter square triangles. The only points that you really need to pin here are the two seams in which are going to go together here of the curves. You want to make those line up. So I'm pinning that at a quarter inch directly through the seam and a quarter inch down. The quarter inch is your sewing line. That's exactly where I want to put my pin because if I pin those segments in place, right, a quarter inch down from the edge of my block. When I sew that, I can check that I'm still sewing a quarter inch seam because sometimes uh, if we're not great at sewing those quarter inch and we get a little wobbly, then that seam's not going to line up properly. So if I pin it at a quarter inch as I'm sewing down that line, I can check myself to see if I'm still sewing a quarter inch. And as long as I get to that point and cross it exactly, when I open that up, those seams are going to lie very nicely together. Okay? So I'm just going to put a couple little extra pins in here just to hold my raw edges together. One thing to remember too when you're working with curves 
And even when you're sewing seams together where there might be some bias on the straight edge, don't pull your fabrics. You have to remember to let the machine take the fabric through on its own. You don't need to be manipulating it. As long as you've pinned those seams in place, let the machine take the fabric through, and then your fabrics are gonna lay nice and flat afterwards. Okay, so that's one section. You see my seams line up very nicely. I can come back, I will press this seam open because I want that larger seam to lay nice and flat. Give that a good press again. And then I'm gonna do the same thing that we just did to these two pieces. Okay, so I've pressed my seams. I've pressed this seam open down through the middle on both of my blocks, just to keep that bulk so that my block will lay nice and flat afterwards. So with those two sections together, now I'm gonna put these right sides together. And again, I wanna pin the three points where I have those seams so that those seams will line up to complete that circle. Again, I'm always pinning at a quarter inch. I just find that that's my best key to guide, to check, am I still sewing a quarter inch seam? I try to keep it just to the three pins. Um, I find people will often overpin, and we spend so much time doing that. But if you just allow the machine to take the fabric, you really only have to focus on keeping your raw edges together. Okay, so we have the three section, three points that we need to match up are already pinned and ready to go. And there I have my block all sewn together. Now when I finish also, I'll go back and I'll press that seam open as well. Because of the intersections here, everything just lays much nicer if you just press that seam open. Okay, and there's the block finished. It's all pressed and I'm ready to start making my next block. So it goes together very easy. You just need to have patience when you're sewing with your curves. And I also wanna be able to show you some other variations that you can do with this die. So looking at color placement, Get that out of the way. For instance, here you could change the background of your bow tie shape to have two different colors and play with the different shapes to go together. In fact, we could kind of play with this right here. If you imagine, you could do the same thing here. I've used the same fabric, but let's look at these other pieces that I have. You see how you can just continue to play and change? You can see how you can line up and change the pattern just by how you're dropping these little guys in here. If those were all the same, that could be a contrasting color that's happening through the design of the quilt. That's one way to play with it. Like I said, the two different colors of the bow tie. Here you could use the same if you want, like a traditional version of it. This one here, I've used the, the star points to the inside and I've used a lighter version and a darker version. And what I like here is that I could start playing with this design and build a quilt so that you get an accent and totally change the visual uh, interpretation of what you see when you look at that block. So again, this is the sort of the traditional version of the quilt, except that I've used around each block, I've used a slightly different color of a light fabric. So whites, creams, beige, a little bit of lavender. It's all very subtle, but it gives you a lot of play and color on and uh, play on light. Um, and here I just dropped one of the little stars in just for a little extra pop of color, okay? This quilt back here is sort of how you would find it as a traditional version. Scrap quilts, which are right up my alley. Here I've used my made fabric and leaving the uh, quarter square circle as a negative space. This is how I've seen many of the old traditional bow tie quilts done, and I love the effect. And I think it's very appropriate for now when we talk about modern versus tradition, modern and tradition. It's a quilt that has followed into both categories all of these years. So I hope you have as much fun with the bow tie block as I have. There's lots of options to explore. Go enjoy.